Welcome back. Bruce Porter joins us now for this week's Dollars and Cents segment. Thank you so much for coming in. How are you doing? Good to be here. I'm you great. You got a haircut. It looks nice. Yeah, I'm refreshed. Yeah. Just got back from vacation. <gasps> you so did. I'm good. Very yeah. good. That's. I'm going to take one of those next week. So. Yeah. Now listen, we're going to start by asking you about the reverse mortgages today, and I have no clue about how that works. You see it on the TV. They have all these ads, but let's just start with how does it work? Well, and that's. We've been getting a lot of questions about mm -hmm. uh, how do reverse mortgages work. I haven't kept up with what's on the TV, but I assume there's a lot of ads. Both pros and cons. Pros and cons, positive and negative about it. So mm -hmm. I thought, you know, this would be a good time. Let's just address the basics mm -hmm. and just give people kind of a feel for how they work. So a reverse okay. mortgage, it's exactly the opposite of a traditional loan where right. you make a payment, your balance decreases, you owe less as you make more payments. Okay. With a reverse mortgage, as you, as you go years down the road, your debt gets bigger than, than when you started because mm -hmm. it's reverse. It's, it's adding on to your debt as you move forward. Now, that's just the basics of how that works, all right? Okay. It's not a traditional, I pay and my debt gets reduced. Right. Now. The requirements for a reverse mortgage. You got to be 62 years old uh, or older. All right. Uh, it's got to be owner occupied. So it's right. got to be your principal you residence. Uh, and that means you have to reside there at least six months out of the year. So I've oh. had people ask, can I have my place in Texas and have this and have a reverse? And yeah, as long as, as, long as this is your principal residence, okay. that's your vacation home, and you reside here more than six months out of the year, you qualify. Okay. Single family homes are pretty much the rule, but uh, reverse mortgages are available if you own or occupy uh, a two to four unit uh, building, mm -hmm. uh, or if you have a condo where you're in with a building with right. other people, or if you have a manufactured home, there are some lenders that will stretch that out and, and loan to condos and manufactured. Okay, do you now, have to have equity? How much equity do you have to have? Yes, you have to have equity. This a reverse mortgage has to be the first mortgage. It, it replaces anything else. So let's say you have a first and a second mortgage on your house and you're on a fixed income, you're mm -hmm. retired and you're having trouble making the payments. Mm -hmm. If you have enough equity in your home, you could do a reverse mortgage and eliminate that payment for those uh, uh, loans. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Which is going to increase your monthly cash flow. All right. Now okay. let's dive a little deeper. Uh, you must remain in the home when you do the reverse mortgage. You can't do a reverse, eliminate your debt, and then rent it out and have move someone else be paid. somewhere else. Yeah. Right. Okay. You have to stay in your home. The only requirements are you have to maintain the taxes and the insurance and the maintenance and upkeep. So you okay. got to keep your house in good well, shape. You, you would want to do that anyway. You got to pay taxes and insurance. Yeah. And they they want proof of that every year. You got to send proof that you've made the payments and things like that. Right. Uh, now, uh, repayment. Uh, everybody asks, well, if I do that, and I've got all this debt right. that I've consolidated. Now, when do I ever repay that? Well, according, and this is a government mm -hmm. program if you're 62 or older, there is no repayment requirement. That's what, that's the point right there. That now, I, I'm like, yeah, go ahead. Now, <laughs> that's interesting. The debt is required to be repaid mm -hmm. if you s sell the house, mm -hmm. uh, you got to pay the debt, mm -hmm. but you keep the equity. Uh, if you move out of the residence, so let's say you uh, go into a nursing care, okay. all right, then it's not your primary residence, so you got to either refinance it or sell it or pay it off. Uh, if you die, right. uh, your heirs will have the ability to refinance it, uh, pay it off, uh, pay, pay it off out of their pocket or sell the home. All okay. right, and retain the equity. It's all about retaining the equity that's left. Okay. Uh, or uh, if if you need to, uh, like say you you fall and break a hip and you're in nursing care for three or four months. Right. The loan's not going to become due at that time because that's still your primary residence. So again, a lot of questions right. on. What happens if? But well, they could sit and talk with you about that too. They so can. Now, when you set one of these up, do you have to have somebody in place? Because if if you die, are you going to owe somebody then? And do they want somebody on that on that paperwork to to pay them back, or how does that work? No, what? you're the the mortgage is on the property, so mm -hmm. you're uh, you're beneficiaries of to your estate. They will be required, you know, to right. satisfy the debt on the property. 
uh, the key is uh, if you've lived in the property for 20 or 25 years since you did the reverse mortgage, uh, yeah, it may have accumulated a little debt, but we got to remember mm -hmm. the equity in our home is usually the largest asset that goes that untapped. That's right. So people live impoverished right. with this huge equity in their home right. and when why all they got to do is, is just kind of redo things a little bit.